comfortable with it. You're comfortable with barely getting by. You're comfortable with the fact that your your go-to is pornography or you're comfortable with your go-to, you know, like your small group is Jim Beam, Jose Cuervo and Jack Daniels. Like you're comfortable with that, right? Like, and that's, that's okay for you. You're okay with being overweight. You're okay with living unhealthy. You're okay with junk food. You're okay with not having an amazing relationship with your wife. Come on. He kind of blends in, doesn't he? We should rename him Asphalt. What do you think about all this uh, people being tripped out about the coronavirus, AJ? Um, I just feel like uh, it's new, so people are just following what they see on the media and what they hear say, but they don't do any research on their own. Yeah. It's kind of like the sheep, they just flock, you know? Yeah. We really got to start micing you up. You want to get the dog peeing? I didn't do it long. I just did it a little bit. <laughs> That's like an invasion of his privacy. We recorded the dog in the toilet. So, um, so I went, I went live last night on the dad's group, and really had this moment that was kind of, for me at least, something pretty raw came out of it not settling for that version of you that's unacceptable does that make sense so had this uh went live last night with the guys we can walk up here <clears throat> went live last night with the guys on uh on facebook and i was talking about i had this idea um of holding space for things in your life that for you are unacceptable and what I mean by that is, you know, you see this, right? People, people talk about, we see it with people who get gym memberships. People talk about like the need to go to the gym. Come on, dude. Come on, dude. Hey, there you go. People talk about like the need to get gym memberships and physical fitness and stuff like this. And then they might go five or six times and then it's like, oh crap, going to the gyms, like it's work, right? You have to put in work or launching a business. How many, I mean, dude, how many people have you met who've like, oh, I'm going to be an entrepreneur and I'm going to launch a business and I'm going to do this, that, and the other. And then they get five minutes down the road and it's like, crap, this is hard. Or it's like, um, you know, my particular personality or temperament or whatever is a certain way or, you know, like me, I want to be a father, husband. I am a father, husband. It's like, oh crap, I'm a crappy father, husband. And then you have to put in the work of what does it mean to be a good husband? What does it mean to be a good dad to your kids? Larry on the show today was talking about how he, he and Jessica, his wife, you know, they, they had, you know, their, their schedules have been kind of mixed up and they'd really not had an opportunity to like spend intimate time together in like a while, he said, but his young or his six year old son was like calling for him. Like when he and Jessica were about to go hang out and spend some time together. And he was like, Oh man, he was like, come on. He's, he's like, man, I just want to spend time with mom. But um, but he went in there and he he said that his son was saying to him, um, you know, Dad, I'm afraid. And he was like, Buddy, what are you afraid of? I'm afraid of monsters or whatever it is, you know. And Larry was like, you know, like in that moment, I really wanted to go back and hang out with Jessica, but my kid needed me, so I had to show up for my kid in that moment. So Larry didn't serve his selfishness, and Larry didn't serve his self-centeredness. Larry served his son. Now, by the time he got back to his bedroom, like Jessica was already tired and they went to sleep or whatever, but Larry got to show up last night for a six-year-old. And here's the point, how many people start off down a path, like we talk a lot about self-help and this kind of thing, and there is validity, like self-help is something, as long as humans are, like self-improvement and how can I get better and how can I show up better to those around me 
like that is something that I have to do, right? If I want to improve, if I want to grow, if I want to change my headspace, but then how many people make space in their life for things that are unacceptable? And you learn to live like how many, dude, my, dude, I have family members who to this day live from paycheck to paycheck because they've made space in their life. Like they're, even though they're uncomfortable living the paycheck to paycheck, they're like more uncomfortable going out and figuring a way out to not live from paycheck to paycheck than they are to live to paycheck to paycheck. Does that make sense? It's kind of like there is a change, there is a growth adaptation that's going to have to take place in order for you not to be from paycheck to paycheck. But I'm, I'm more, it's kind of like a person who lives in like a filthy room or whatever. Are you more comfortable living in filth than you are taking the time to clean the room, right? Are you more, it's like guys who have, you know, that have addictions of something, or it's like people who say, well, I, I can't cut carbohydrates out of my diet, or I can't stop looking at this thing online that I know is unhealthy for me. Well, yeah, you can, right? And you have to change that self-talk and you have to change that self-narrative. Or every time these people talk about me at schools, it really gets me down. Every time that my, you know, my friend talks about me behind my back, it really bothers me. Like I hear that, but you're also making space in your life for that negative thing to continue to happen. How do you get people to quit talking about you? Well, quit making space for it. Like you're either going to live a victim or you're going to live the hero of your story. You're going to be the person who shows up and figures out how to get it done, like regardless or not. So the big thing that I went on and on about last night on the dads with the Facebook page, um, with the Facebook Live and the dads group, and there were several guys on. It was kind of cool because they were putting comments in the chat box and stuff. But the thing is, is, is how many how many guys choose to live in unacceptable whatever? How many people choose to live in unacceptable? Like if your relationship, like if you're a married man and your relationship with your wife is less than amazing then that is a decision that you can that you consistently somehow you're choosing somehow to not make that relationship amazing and what can you do to contribute to that relationship being amazing if you're in a work environment where your boss is a jerk or you don't feel appreciated or you haven't got a raise in 10 years, you're the one living with that. How about this? If you live in an environment where everything in your life is drama and you feel like you're surrounded by drama and this kind of thing, I mean, could it be true, man? Could it be true, woman, that you're the one attracting the drama? So if you're making space in your life for things that are unacceptable, and we mentioned a moment ago about even the virus and the thing, and it's been declared a pandemic today, and I get that, and okay, yes, that's happening, but am I gonna live in, am I gonna make space for that to keep me from going to work today, right? I mean, there's even a proverb that talks about how, you know, one's going to say that there's a lion in the street. Oh, man, there's a lion in the street. We can't go in the street because we're going to get ate by the lion. Well, you have to go into the street because that's how you get to your job, right? No, you have to, you have to keep, you, you cannot make space for unacceptable. You, you just cannot make space for unacceptable. And, and so, so I want to, try to wrap it up with probably what's going to sound like a convoluted thought here. And here's the convoluted thought 
in our life, we have constructs that can be inflicted on us and constructs can come through social or you might, you know, you may be this, that or the other. And there's stigmas that goes around with all of these constructs. Like I was talking to one guy today, he was a professional football player. There was expectations of him since he was a professional football player, international speaker and this, that and the other. And he's like, there's all these constructs. And he was like, man, even as a father, there's like constructs and, and ex, you know, ex, expectations around me from me as a father. And he's like, you know what? Like, I don't have to live to the pressure of all the constructs like around me. And at the end of the conversation, we kind of flip the page and it's not about you living to the pressure or someone else's expectations, right? It's not about you living to someone else's expectations, either healthy or unhealthy. Like it's a healthy expectation. It's, it's healthy for me to want my kid to go to Stanford, but if my kid doesn't want to go to Stanford, then he's gonna have to not capitulate, not bend, not fold, not break under the pressure or the weight of his dad wanting him to go to Stanford, right? My kid, my son's gonna have to, he's gonna have to like march to the beat of his own drum and figure out the way that he wants to go and what he wants to do. Kid might even bypass college and just trade in the market, who knows, right? So we have to change, we have to flip this thing on its head and it's not about you living to someone else's expectations. It's not about you allowing me or any other talking head on YouTube define what success looks like for you. It's not about that at all. It's about you flipping this thing around and saying, okay, who am I really today? Who am I really today? And then, so you create your own construct. You create your own I, I, you know, I almost want to say alter ego and then live up to that. Does that make sense, AJ? So just All right, AJ, do you have parting? Do you have some words of wisdom? I do. Let's so, so like John was saying, any um, situation that you are in is a situation that you've attracted. So, if you have goals that are up here, what do you mean you've attracted? Well, there's nothing in your life that you haven't caused. You don't attract anything. Like you don't. There's nothing that you can have that you don't attract. Right. You get me? Cause you'll yeah, you. you'll never be in a situation if you if you get rid of the situation. So if you have goals and ambitions that are up here, but your frequency of your you know your brain is down here, you still think like oh, yeah. You love yeah. Thinking. If you still yeah, yeah, think yeah. down here and your frequency is down here and yeah. your actions are down here, but you have a goal up here, you'll never reach that goal. But once you know that you already have that, you're already there. Anything that you will have, you already have. You just put in the effort, you, you, you hire your brain frequency, you start to attract more of this goal, then you're eventually gonna collide with that goal because your frequency is on the same wavelength as that goal. John Maxwell calls this the law of the lid. The law of the lid? Yeah, uh, he says you have to raise your lid. Yeah, basically you just raise your frequency because we move in frequencies. All right, so that range. Whatever you see all day is what you're gonna think about every day. Like you think about what you thought about yesterday. So if every day you're thinking about half naked females, then that's probably what's going to be on your mind all day. That's probably a problem. That's probably a problem. Yeah. <laughs> Unless you're married and the half naked female you're thinking about is your wife. And then that is healthy. Healthy. Good tip. It's not always about what's in front of you, but what's inside you that matters. There you go. Have a good day ask yourself, are you making the shift in your life? Are you putting in the work? Are you like, are you changing? Does that make sense? Like, are you committed to becoming that version of you? Like you may not even see it yet, right? You, you may not even see the version of you that you know you can be, or you like, you may not even have that, you know, that big grandiose vision for your life. And and I honest to God don't even think it's about having a big grandiose vision for your life as much as it is about not settling for so not settling for that version of you that's unacceptable. Does that make sense? So that you know the day for me this whole 
you know, the whole commitment to personal health, the whole commitment to, you know, showing up for Alexis and the whole commitment to showing up for the boys, man, I'm going to tell you that for me, those were, those were responsive, responsive reactions. If that makes any sense at all. For me, those were responses to wait, holy crap. I just, I just yelled at my 11 year old. Like what, what did he deserve? I mean, what did, what does 11 do? You know, what does an 11 year old do to be like yelled at by a grown man? Like, come on, dude. Like what the, you know what I'm saying? Like, so for me, when I was walking through the gym, you know, and this is what, this is like five years ago. And, and I'd seen the transformation I was able to make in my body but then it didn't matter the transformation that I was able to make in my body if like my wife and my kids weren't, if it, if it wasn't for them, if that makes sense. So here, like, here's my thing, right? At what point in your life are you going to be unwilling to settle for who you are? I want you to think about that. Like, look, the reason why it, so if you're not a millionaire, right, and money is a priority to you, or how about this? If you're not a millionaire and you keep struggling from paycheck to paycheck, it's, there's a part of you that's become comfortable with struggling with paycheck to paycheck. If you're a porn addict or if you keep running to something else, there's a part of you that, that it, it's acceptable for you to be a porn addict. For me, it w it's just simply not acceptable. It's unacceptable. And you've got to become really uncomfortable with what for you is unacceptable, right? Like, is, is your, like, do you really want six pack abs? I'm stuck. I don't know what to do about not being stuck. See, this is where Zoom would be helpful. Like, we could just hop on a Zoom right now. I mean, I'll, I'll try to sum it up maybe in a live video from the office at another time, but are you, un like, what crap in your life do you continue to settle for? Am I still stuck, Javier? Like, is the, is the whatever still hung up? I mean, if it is, I don't know. Maybe nobody's watching or listening right now, but hopefully it's not stuck. But here's my, so, is, uh, what's up, Vince? I mean, if you're going through those things, oh, then you're stuck. Okay, I thought you were talking about the video was stuck, off. <laughs> well, I don't know that you're stuck, Hav. You're just accept, you're just accepting your life for what it is like if you like it like if you truly want is it unacceptable for you to have a knockdown drag out argument with your wife like i don't remember what's up dennis like alexis and i dude you want to know the king of arguing over the dumbest shit ever this guy this guy me I'm the king of arguing over just stupid stuff. Stuff that will not will never matter 10 seconds on the other side of like the grave. It won't matter. And so if it doesn't matter, then what's the point of arguing over it? Right? So there was a while back, it dawned on me, this is my life. What's up, Dennis? This is but, but Javier, like, I hear what you're saying. Being stuck is a choice, and I agree. But for the guy who's, for the guy who's stuck, is it for him stuck, right? Jimmy, you have to be sick and tired of being sick and tired. Yes, and amen on both of those points. And so when Alexis and I, when, like, I, re I just remember thinking, and I even remember saying out loud, like, this is our life. Like, why, like, do we really want our life to be this way? This is your gentleman. This is your life. How do you want your life? 
Are you are you fine with barely scraping by and barely living paycheck to paycheck? Like Larry, the uh, is this building or destroying the relationship? Yeah, you have to ask that, right? But if it's just like stupid stuff, then it's not, I mean, I don't think it's going to be building at all. Like, for example, Larry sent out, how many of you guys got the text from Hagner yesterday? And he sends out this thing. And in August, um, you know, in August, they're doing this, that guys, this man and like father, son thing in Breckenridge. And it looks amazing. And you know what? It's not free right? There's like a price tag on it. You know what? Five years ago, the dollar sign would have immediately cut me out. I would not have been able to do it. Yesterday when I got the text from Hagner, the price tag wasn't even a consideration. Because for me, it has become simply unacceptable to go through life in a scarcity state. It's just unacceptable. The thing that, I mean, I, we might go like we, I hope me and the boys get the duck go. The thing that's going to deter us from going is my senior is my son's senior year of football. School starts back in August in Alabama like early August and that'd be, he'll be in football season. And I know my son wants to play every game that he can his senior year of football. So I'm going to honor that because he's put in the reps and he's put in the work. And as much as I'd love to fly Jaden and Joshua to Breckenridge and we, you know, we fly into DIA and we do the thing and we have fun in the mountains and we get to hang out with a bunch of the guys and the kids, like that would be amazing. Yes. And amen. But my thing is, is, for you, what is unacceptable in your life? And 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 you, what? Where is that area where you are? You've grown comfortable with, or what is that area that you simply choose to avoid? What is that area that you either you either simply just blatantly choose to avoid it, or? You're comfortable with it. You're comfortable with barely getting by. You're comfortable with the fact that your your go-to is pornography. Or you're comfortable with your go-to, you know, like your small group is Jim Beam, Jose Cuervo, and Jack Daniels. Like, you're comfortable with that, right? Like, and that's, that's okay for you. You're okay with being overweight. You're okay with living unhealthy. You're okay with junk food. You're okay with not having an amazing relationship with your wife. You're okay with not being sympathetic for your kids or to your kids. You're okay with not being understanding. You're okay with not giving your kids the affection that you should have, that you wish to God you had when you were a kid because somebody didn't give you affection. So by God, I'm not going to give affection because I didn't. No, that's horseshit. I give my kids affection. I choose to love on my kids. I choose to hug my kids. I choose to, I, right? And that's how I want to do life. And anything else for me is simply unacceptable. It's simply unacceptable to do life differently. It's simply unacceptable to not love my wife by loving my wife. It's simply unacceptable. It's unacceptable. The work environment that I choose to create, I've created a culture with our company, with our organization, I've created a culture that we work really hard to maintain. And we work really hard, not just to maintain, we work hard to protect it and we work hard to build it and we work hard to grow it. And that same culture permeates through my home with my wife and my kids. I want to create the space. I want, I want to own that space that I'm in. Right? I want to own the space that I'm in. So, gentlemen, for you, what does it look like for you to own your space? And then you have to ask the question, what for you, what for you have you consciously chose? I got to turn the light off because I'm back in the garage and I don't want to hit anything. <laughs> hey, you can't see crap. I'll turn it back on. My wife's walking out. What for you 
Yeah, Javier. At... <laughs> hey, baby doll. What for you? What do you settle for? I really don't want to hit anything. I got a squat rack over here and some weights and my wife's car and the truck fits. <laughs> you know, what for you is unacceptable? What's up, Tommy? I I used to I used to put too much stock in the things that didn't matter. God created us for movement, forward progress, overcoming, and it's hard, but it's the point. Amen, Hav. And I mean, you even go back to creation, man. God put Adam and Eve in a garden, and God put Adam in a garden to tend the garden and rule over the garden and like all that kind of thing. I used I used to I I used to be way too concerned about the wrong things. I used to be concerned about yeah don't mess up the home gym amen to that i used to be concerned about the wrong things i used to be concerned way too much about dishes in the sink or dirty clothes in the floor or i used to be way too concerned about the wrong things and i'm not saying that dirty dishes are like you know something that we should avoid or clothes in the floor or something like that or things that we should have avoid or whatever but i'm like i'm seriously considering hiring a housekeep a house cleaner for us like someone to come in and help carry the load my wife loves what she does she loves getting to show up for special needs students she loves getting to do that and so she chooses to do that our our 14 year old is involved in archery now our 16 year old works full-time almost every week what's up aaron shore oh dennis amen dude amen to that oh man king king of ego i feel that dog i so feel that so guys and i want to wrap this up because i'm going to go inside and, and spend some time well again i got a text message from alexis while ago that totally threw me off so anyway that's uh, anyway um what do you value? I mean, do you value appearances or do you value the genuine article? And I'm afraid that too many of us are too caught up with appearances. We're way too caught up with appearances. My yard needs cut right now. Well, so does the neighbors on both sides and across the street. And it's been an, it's an honor and it's a pleasure to know you guys and to get to do life with you guys. But you really do need to do the hard work internally. And you also need to do the hard work on your calls with other men. I, I think this is why this community exists. I thank God daily for this community, guys. Y'all don't know. It's it's this community. I am a person of faith. I have served in full-time ministry before. But it's this community that God has used to help change my life. And this isn't necessarily a faith community. This is a brotherhood of men who simply refuse to do life like any way than optimal. That's how I view it. And to me, that's a high standard. So for you, what are things that you're consistently choosing? What are unhealthy things in your life that you consistently choose to accept? Where are unhealthy areas in your life that you consistently choose to accept? Is it living paycheck to paycheck? Is it not having an amazing relationship with your wife and truly loving that woman? Is it not having, do you accept a mediocre relationship with your kids? Come on, man. You get to be a dad. 
you get to be, it doesn't, it doesn't matter whether or not your father was there for you when you were a kid, or maybe you had the best father in the world. That doesn't matter, man. A hundred percent. What matters is that you show up. Uh, Aaron, I think guys need to understand where the throttle needs to be for them. Aaron, I, I, yeah. We all for sure make each other better. I appreciate you, John. Back at you, Dennis. Aaron, yeah, each each man needs to set the throttle in their life. I agree with that. It's like if you're working out with somebody in the gym, you know, one guy's going to have one plate on the bar and another guy's going to have two plates on the bar and you you have to know your own body and stuff like that. But I also think there I also think there there is there is a pattern of living systems and processes that we can keep in place that do promote and create health in our life. And guys, if you're settling for anything in your life that is not healthy, I would encourage you to reprioritize or to reconsider why you choose to settle, why you choose to settle for debt, why you choose to settle for wastefulness, why you choose to settle for making a big deal only about things that are external and not really doing the heart work and the soul work of creating those things that make you truly loved and truly authentic. That's what I want to be for my wife. That's what I want to be for my kids. And that's what I want to be for the people that I get to work with. That's what, that's what I want to be for students that we have the opportunity to speak to. That's what I want to be. Yeah. Yeah. And anything less than optimal is unacceptable. Thank you, Aaron. Guys, on that note, I'm out. Y'all have an amazing night. And I will catch you later. See you guys. Thanks for listening to another episode of Life That Counts. Tune in next time for more insight with host John Williams.